I'm, I'm, I'm outside. outside. Yeah, I knew you could do it, Mom. Mom? Sam? Sam, Sam where, where are, are we? we? I'm, I'm scared. scared. I'm right here. Mom, I need you to do something. What? what? Turn around. I can't. Sure you can. Just turn around and look behind you. Oh, where's, where's the, building? the building? Where's my apartment? Where's my home? It's gone! Those bastards, they tore it down! You, you made me leave and they tore it down! Hey, calm down. I've got nothing now. Mom. I am not your mother. You are not my son. Damn. My son hates me. All I had left was my home, and then... Then I... Oh, God. You just realized the truth. Sorry, you can't a dead lady. Are you happy now? No. You couldn't just leave me there. You had to bring me out. You had to make me remember. I'm sorry. It's horrible. Being dead, it's horrible. You get used to it. I... I don't want to feel like this anymore. Everything is so dark and cold. Can I go home now? Sure. Sure, I can take you home. Just hold on to this. Thank God we've wrapped up this little fiasco. Over to you, kid. Right. And the Countess is going to confront us and try to kill us. Unless she's like a continuing character in the series? That would be weird. Oh my god. Mavis? It's so bright and big. It just goes on forever. I just want to go home. Please, can I go home? I think that's the only home you've got now. I'm sorry. What a legacy. Husband gone and dead. My son hates my guts. My home is gone. My life over. I remember that too. Dying, I mean. That old woman choking me. Old woman? She just came in and killed me. She said she was going to help me. Uh, well, what now? The light, Mavis. Just head towards it. And then? I don't know. I'm scared, but it feels right somehow. Oh, John. Sam. I'm so sorry for everything. I wish I could feel sorry for you. Ha! <laughs> I don't feel much of anything anymore. Oh, that's Best not luck, wherever you are. Yeah, I was I was gonna be saying, oh yeah, she's a real bee, and no, no, she's just dead inside. That's you all right. Not great. Yeah, fine. I'm exhausted. Call it a night. Sounds good to me. I oh no! You like clockwork. You saved her. Yeah, sure we did. No thanks to you. We've got some questions for you, lady. Why did you kill Isaac and Mavis? I didn't kill them. I'm like you. You're nothing like us. We don't kill. I help spirits into the next world, like you. You mean, you're a medium? Yes. But you can't be. I am like you. Wait. No, this doesn't make any sense. Why are you killing people? I save people. I don't hurt them. Get back here, stupid old hag. Let's get after her. Again with this? What's happening? God damn it. Your nose okay? That lamppost should not have been there. <laughs> oh. Oh boy, what is going on with this? We're out of cases, what do we do now? Joey! Joseph! Joe Farino! Joe Ferrigno, come on, what are you doing? Ah, uh, Joe Ferrigno. You wouldn't like me when I'm dead. Feeling better? I'm so confused, Joey. Oh, it's Lou Ferrigno. I feel like the answer is on the tip of my tongue. I just can't figure it out. Well, let's chat for a while. Brainstorm a bit. Maybe we'll come up with something. She's a medium like me. It makes no sense. It does make sense, actually. She's not an animal or another ghost. 
The only way she could see me is if she was a medium like you. Why would a medium kill? Maybe she doesn't think of it as killing. She did say she helped people, saved them. By killing them? Maybe she felt they were better off dead? I don't think so. Mavis and Isaac were sad mixed up people. But they didn't deserve to die. Maybe she thinks otherwise. Is she my future? What do you mean? That woman, the Countess, or whatever she's called. Is that what happens to mediums when they get old? I... I don't know, darling. I really don't. But I won't let that happen to you. <laughs> you have my word on that. Yeah, you did a real good job with that, Joseph. If she's a medium, where is her spirit guide? You know, I wondered that myself. I'm your connection to the spirit world. The Countess, or whoever she is, doesn't have that. Or at least none that we can see. Is it possible to be a medium without a guide? I don't think so, sweetheart. That's one thing I'm sure of. Medium and guide. That's how it works. So maybe she helped her spirit guide pass on, and now she's unbalanced. What could have happened? I don't know. I thought you couldn't leave my side. I know. Either her spirit guide managed to escape, or... Or what? Or it was killed. Is that possible? I don't know. I don't think I want to know. So what could her connection be? Dunno. Something has to connect her to the spirit world. It's not another ghost or we would see it. So it must be something else. Something that has a connection to everything we've seen. Or someone. Yeah, that's it. The Countess connects these two cases. There has to be something or someone else that has the same connection. Joseph Mitchell. Joseph Mitchell? Bingo. The reporter? How could he have this kind of power? I don't know how he got the power, but it all fits. He wrote about both Mavis and Isaac, and the Countess killed both of them. He seems like the best candidate. But it doesn't make any sense. Think about it. You're a medium. What is it that mediums do? Not <laughs> deal with Joey. Listen to misogynistic ghosts all day. Ha ha. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to be serious for once. <laughs> oh, Lauren, I love you. I'm really sorry what happens to you. Spoiler, does not end well. We help spirits into the next world. Exactly. A medium needs a guide. Hers is gone. Somehow Mitchell fills in the gap. Our Countess is being told through Mitchell's writing to help certain spirits into the next world. It's not her fault they're still alive. You mean... I think you get the picture. Oh god, that's sick. It makes sense though. How is this possible? There's only one way to find out. It's time we paid our friend Mitchell one more visit. Orin, get your smoky butt out there. Speaking of which, let's take a look at that butt. Hey, look at that butt! You got a good butt for an old, uh, old medium lady. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. All right. Let's shake them games and get down there to uh, to that reporter guy, and finally bring that murderer to justice. Yes. It's over, John. You're going down. Miss Blackwell. You got a Hello ghost, again, a clown, Mr. and a medium. We're I was going just to... about to head home. No, no, you're not. You're heading oh, I'll to just the... be a second. Well, if you insist, you insist, you have a seat. Thanks, but I'd rather stand. Go on, let him have it. Mind if I smoke? Well, actually... Thanks. Yeah. Miss Blackwell, my patience is wearing thin. My family is waiting for me. Tell me what you want. Mr. Mitchell, two people are dead. So I gathered. You wrote about both of them. Yes, I did. You don't find anything suspicious about that. I've written about hundreds of people over 30 years. The fact that two of them happen to be dead does not surprise me. It's just a coincidence. Funny thing about my life, Mr. Mitchell? If something looks like a coincidence, it normally isn't. Well, I hate to disappoint you. Ooh, look at the sweat on this guy's brow. If he ain't lying, I'm dying. So to speak. <laughs> you finished your writing for the day, Mr. Mitchell? Yes, yes I have. And now I'm going home. He's full of hot air. The page is blank. You haven't written anything today, have you? Why do you say that? The paper is blank. 
What? How do you know that? I have exceptional eyesight. There's dust. Don't forget the dust. And there's dust on the typewriter. Well, can't contradict you there. So? So, I don't think that's any of your business, Miss Blackwell. Now, if you'll excuse me. You aren't a very good liar. And you are poking your nose into things you don't understand. You'd be surprised at what I understand, Mr. Mitchell. Try me. Not me. I'm pretty much clueless all the time. Who are you, anyway? You come in, out of the blue, and bring up all this. All of what? I don't know. I... I honestly don't know. I write about people and they die. Can you understand that, can you? My whole life I've been driven to write about people. Now I kill them instead. Hmm. Nah, I don't really like you. You've done nothing wrong. There's a woman called the Countess. She kills whoever you write about. A Countess? Killing people that I write about. That's a tall story. And that's a lot to take in. Why would she do something like that? How did this happen? How do you still probably have a job? Probably because of your connection to humanity. I don't know. You said probably. So you're not sure? Not as such, no. Well then. I appreciate you trying, but I prefer if you left well enough alone. Hmm, let me see here. Hmm. Why is this happening? I think it's a penance of some kind. Penance? I've shared the intimate details of people's lives with the world. Perhaps I revealed one secret too many. I don't think about it anymore. I just come to work like nothing's wrong. Everyone's been very polite so far, but I'm sure the ball will drop someday. I can't leave it alone, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, rest assured you can. You seem like a capable young lady, and I'm sure you think you know what's what. But I don't want any more deaths on my conscience. Don't you want to write again? Oh yes, but people are safe as long as I don't write about anything real. I've always wanted to try a hand at fiction. Had a story in my head for years. I'll probably give it a whirl, see how it goes. But no more deaths. Not on my watch. Don't you want to help? There's a killer out there. Who only kills people I write about. So I stop writing about people. Problem solved. I'm trying to help you. And I never asked for it. People die when I write. So, I don't write. The problem's solved. You're not a murderer, Mr. Mitchell. No, I'm not. Five years back, I tried to write about a man. An old man in a bar. He was killed the next day, choked to death. I didn't think anything of it at the time. Then I wrote about another man, Mr. Isaac Brown. You know him. He died the same way. Still figured it was just a coincidence. But then it happened with Mavis Wilcox. For the third time in a row, no, I didn't kill them. Not on purpose. But if I wrote a fourth time, that would be murder. Plain and simple. Well, hold on. Who was the first guy? If we can... If you won't help me, I'll have to go to the police. Oh? And tell them what? All those deaths? All killed the same way? So soon after you met them? I'm sure they'd be interested in that information. Is that right? Well, I'd be careful if I were you. Careful? I'm not without defenses, if you know what I mean. Is that a threat? Are you threatening to write about me? I didn't say anything. You know what? Go right ahead. What do you mean? You want to write so bad? Write about me. Dust off that typewriter and get to work. Knock yourself out. Listen, I spoke out of turn. I didn't honestly mean... Hell with that. Just do it. Hey, this is dangerous. I know what I'm doing. I can't do it. Like hell you can't. You've been writing for how long? 30 years? More? I know you can do it. I want to meet this thing head on. It's the only way. Do it! You don't know what you're asking. What's the worst that could happen? You could die. Oh. Is that all? But... Quiet. Damn! Chick's got balls. I like it. Right. I was born in Troy, upstate New York. My mother's name was Patricia. My father... You getting this stuff down? 